Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we've been looking at a lot of mini PCs lately, but this one is from a name brand. This is the Lenovo Idea Center Mini, and this one is powered by an Intel i7 processor and of course runs Windows. We'll test Linux out before we close out this review. And this reminds me a lot of the Mac Mini, but of course this is a Windows device and costs a little less than the Apple alternative might cost you. And we're gonna take a closer look at this in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure, that this is on loan from Lenovo. So we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this mini PC is all about. Now the price point on these will vary based on configuration. At the moment, it looks like these start at around 500 bucks and then go up from there. The one we're looking at today has an i7-13700H processor. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of NVMe storage. Now, a little bit earlier, I took it apart, and all you have to do is lift off the top plate there and then go to town with a screwdriver. You then flip it over, and then you can get the bottom plate pulled off, and then you can access the components. The RAM is upgradable. As you can see, it has dual channel memory in this configuration. And so you just have to lift up the CPU fan to get at the memory. And then the built-in power supply can be lifted up to reveal the NVMe storage. You also have a second NVMe slot up there if you wanted to add a second storage device. So a good amount of upgradability on this. And what's nice is that the power supply is integrated so you don't have a separate power brick to power this thing. This also comes with a stand, so you can stand it up on the vertical if you wish, but I have mine here horizontal. There is no Visa mount in the box. I'm not sure if this is mountable, unfortunately. On the front, you've got your power button here. You have a USB 3 port with the USB-A connector, a USB Type-C port. This is a a USB 3 speed connector and not a Thunderbolt connector, but I'll show you another one on the back in a second. This is the headphone microphone jack. On the rear here, you do get many more ports, including a Thunderbolt port here, so you could use this with an external GPU by plugging it into that Thunderbolt port. Additionally, this Thunderbolt port is full service, so you can get video output from here in addition to using data devices, but the Thunderbolt port will not power the computer. You've got to plug in the power cord into that integrated power supply. Now you've got, of course, a few other ports to look at here, including a two and a half gigabit ethernet jack. We did test the ethernet speed and it ran at the advertised performance. You have a USB 3, USB A connector here. However, the one next to it is only USB 2. So this would be the one I would plug your keyboard and mouse into. Here we've got the Thunderbolt port. You also have an HDMI output. You've got a DisplayPort output over here, and then you've got another USB-A port running at USB 3 speeds. So you can very easily get three displays attached to this natively, one through a dongle here on the Thunderbolt, another one through the HDMI, and a third through the DisplayPort. And of course, you can output at 4K at 60 hertz. And we'll plug this into my 4K monitor right now and see how it performs. All right, so we've got it booted up now. We're running at 4K60, and we're gonna pull up our web browser here and start with the basics. We'll visit the nasa.gov homepage and just see how fast everything spins to life here. Now, as expected, we are getting very good performance doing basic work on this thing, and that, of course, is because we've got that beefy Intel chip on board. So I don't think you're gonna have any issues doing some of the basic work on this device. Now, I also booted up a 4K60 video from my YouTube channel. I did notice a couple of drop frames here or there, but nothing that was all that noticeable. So it should do well with basic media consumption like Netflix and others, and of course YouTube and Twitch without any serious issues. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 313, and that puts this pretty much in line with what we saw out of a Legion Pro gaming laptop that we'll be looking at soon that has the same processor. Now, I also booted up DaVinci Resolve here to do a little 4K 60 frames per second video editing. I've just dropped a transition down. We're gonna play this back. And as you can see, we were able to conduct that transition without any lag here. This is basic video editing. This is the kind of stuff that I do here on this channel. 
And when you're just running with the basic Intel graphics like this machine is, it's good enough for this kind of work. But if you're doing something beyond the basics here, like professional color grading or more advanced special effects, you'll certainly want more powerful hardware. This will support an external GPU through that rear Thunderbolt port, so you could boost its graphical capabilities. And the processor on board is more than adequate to handle video editing when you've got one of those GPUs attached. But again, for the basics here, like the stuff that I do on this YouTube channel, this computer would perform well at this task. Now we also booted up some games on here, and one of the cool things about current Intel processors is that they can play recent games at playable frame rates, provided you keep your settings low. So this is Red Dead Redemption 2. We're running this at 720p at the lowest settings, and we're getting anywhere between 30 to 45 frames per second most of the time, so completely playable. Not as good as it would be on a more powerful gaming computer, but still good nonetheless. And of course, you could attach an external GPU and do better. This is Doom Eternal, also running at 720p at the lowest settings. Here we were able to get it above 60 frames per second a good portion of the time, so that's pretty cool to be able to do that with a more recent game. We also ran an older game here. This is Grand Theft Auto V. We ran this at 1080p at the lowest settings, and here we were getting about 40 to 45 frames per second, give or take, as we were running around the world here. So not bad, but if you were looking to do more on the gaming side, some of the AMD Ryzen-based mini PCs that we've looked at recently will do better for games. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy Gaming Benchmark Test, we got a score of 1,720. This puts it pretty much in line with where I would expect this processor to perform. So again, not a groundbreaking gaming chip, but sufficient to play games. We also ran the 3D Mark Stress Test, and there we got a score of 99.4%. And what that score indicates is that when the computer is under heavy sustained load, you're not going to have much of a slowdown. So it's able to keep itself cool. The problem that we've run into with this, though, is that it does have a bit of a noisy fan. So when it's sitting idle like this, you're not going to hear the fan all that much. But once the processor gets put under load, that fan noise definitely becomes audible. Is it distracting? Not so much, but you're going to hear it. And if you're somebody who's sensitive to fan noise and want a very quiet office, especially when you're putting something under load, this may not be the mini PC for you because its fan does have a bit of a noise to it. Now, if you're looking to run operating systems other than Windows, you should have a good experience here. I've got the latest version of Ubuntu running right now and I was able to get everything to boot up and get detected properly. So video is working, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth along with audio are working correctly and all in if you were looking to maybe dual boot or even run Linux as your primary operating system, you can do it. And one of the things I like about this with having two different NVMe slots is that you could have Windows on one drive and Linux on the other. So really nice to see some very easy ways to get alternative operating systems running on this computer. So all in, I found the Idea Center Mini here to be a decent mini PC. And what I like about mini PCs from name brands is that if you have a problem with it, it's a lot easier to get support. Typically, these types of computers that we look at are from overseas brands that may not have as much support available. Lenovo, of course, has uh, facilities all over the world and can likely service this thing if you run into trouble with it. I like how upgradable it is. I think they very smartly designed the interior. You don't need a power brick, and you've got very good performance out of this. My only gripe is the fan noise, but beyond that, if you're looking for a nicely performing and relatively affordable name brand mini PC, this might be one worth checking out. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.